All right, so the first thing, a couple things that you're going to need to worry about. If you do a really, really, really simple uh, free body diagram of the aircraft, so if I draw, I'm going to draw this really big. If I draw an aircraft on the board like this, I've got wings, I've got a tail here, I'm going to have four forces acting on it. So what do I got? Lift. Lift. Weight. Weight. Thrust and drag. Thrust. And then drag. Okay. Weight is sort of an intrinsic property, so it's just going to be mass times gravity. So obviously you want weight to be a minimum, so you just minimize your mass. Okay, that's pretty much it for weight. Um, thrust is going to be a function of your prop. Um, I'm not going to do any prop analysis in this class. There was a prop expert on DBF last year. I think Faraboys was it. I think he's still here, isn't he? So you might want to get with him. There is there is like pitch and uh, and like a diameter. And then you've got KV and RPM and voltage. And you have all of these different parameters that affect how much thrust you get. The biggest thing that you're going to worry about, though, is really just your thrust to weight ratio. How big do you want that to be? Um, this is kind of a rule of thumb thing. You want this to be somewhere between 0.5 and 0.8. The rule is, is you can make a brick fly if you have enough thrust. A quadcopter is really just a brick with four rotors on it. So you're kind of just making a brick fly when you fly a quad. Um, now, if you want it to fly nicely, right? If you make it, if you give it a thrust to weight ratio of 0.5, that means how are you actually going to get in the air? What's going to keep you in the air? Your lift. Your lift, right? So you're trading off thrust for lift in this case. If you have a thrust to weight ratio less than one, so then what we what this lesson is going to be at, be about are these two parameters, lift and drag, and those are aerodynamic terms. And so what people have done in the past is uh, they put different types of uh, shapes into a, a, what's called a wind tunnel where they just blow air at it and measure forces on it and then they've decomposed it into lift and drag. And so the equation for lift is one half rho b squared s c l and drag is one half rho b squared s c d. And so one half is there because somebody decided to divide all of their coefficients by one half Apparently back in the day, I think like in, if you look at text from 1920, there is no one half there and somebody decided that I want to put a one half there, so there is one. Um, this guy, rho, is density of the air. Density of air. This is the velocity of your aircraft. S is the area of your wing. And so this is where things get kind of weird though, right? So the fuselage itself is creating drag, is it not? If you deflect it, it's going to create lift too. Not very much. A pencil is going to create lift if you put it, if you blow enough wind at it, right? But it's, a pencil is probably going to make more drag than lift. Well, what people have done is they've said, well, okay, this guy here, yes, it's going to create a little bit of drag, but the wing is the primary lifting surface on the aircraft, and therefore I'm going to bundle everything into this lifting parameter. And so rather than taking the area of the entire aircraft, I just take the area of the wing, and people are okay with that. This coefficient here is a property of the wing itself. So if you put this kind of wing versus another kind of wing, maybe a longer wing, a thicker wing, whatever. If you change the shape of the wing, you're going to change the coefficient of lift, and you're going to change the coefficient of drag. How do you decide? I'm going to show you a program to help you out with that, exactly. Um, let's see. So some things to consider when you're deciding the shape of your wing. One of the things that you're going to look at is something called aspect ratio. The aspect ratio, which I, I think they write it like this, like an AR put together, is equal to B squared, B is the wingspan, divided by S. So it's a ratio of your wingspan squared to the area of your wing. So a typical aspect ratio is around five. A bigger aspect ratio means you have a much longer wingspan. So there's pros and cons. The longer your wingspan is, the more aerodynamically efficient your aircraft is. However, the longer you make it, what's going to happen? It's going to flex, it's going to vibrate, it's going to break. So if you look at, say, the, uh, the F-104 Starfighter, that had really, really, really short stubby wings. It was not very aerodynamically efficient, but that thing was the, one of the first supersonic aircraft, so it just screamed, it just went as fast as it could. So I didn't really need to worry about that. 
you've got like uh, if you look at the the U two the uh, the surveillance aircraft that has a huge aspect ratio, and the reason why is because they want to have an aerodynamically efficient aircraft because it needs to fly over Russia and take photos, right? So then you need to kind of determine where in that do you want. Again, since you're making an RC aircraft, you can practically you can probably just use a rule of thumb and just use a rectangular wing and just kind of go with that, and then make design design decisions based on that. Um, the other thing that you're going to encounter is called the wing loading. So wing loading is equal to the, I think it's called, I think it's WL, is the amount of lift divided by the area of your wing. Again, that's another rule of thumb. So it means how much lift per unit area on the wing do you get? So if you have a lot, it means that that wing is carrying a lot of lift. So if you have a small wing and your aircraft weighs a lot, your wing loading is probably going to be huge. If you have a really, really big wing, and, and, uh, and not very much weight, your wing loading is going to be low. And again, that's another rule of thumb thing. There's a lot of charts and stuff you can look at. I think it's like 25 ounces per square foot or something like that. I forget what the exact number is, but there's like a ballpark. It's like if you want, a, if you want a, a stunt aircraft, you want a high wing loading because you want to be able to roll the aircraft very quickly. If you just want a very, very like chill kind of surveillance aircraft, you want your wing loading to be low. And again, it's, all of those are kind of rules of thumb. But I'm just trying to give you you know, what these things mean and what they are, and rather than actually telling you how to design them. All right? Let's see. Okay, believe it or not, that's, that's it for, for lift and drag. Does anybody have any questions before we move into coefficient of lift and coefficient of drag? Is anybody going to have any questions throughout the... You had one question, Trevor. Good job. I'm just assuming it goes with, are you going to use XBlue? Yeah, X, I'm going to use XFly. That's, that's where we were struggling with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to hit it? I'll erase the board and we'll, get, we'll go on to the next section.